So I've been thinking. I've been building other people's computers for a while now, and whenever they want an upgrade, they call me over to do it. Now many people think building a computer is like this. Or this. But it's not. It's more like building with Lego bricks. Very expensive and sensitive Lego bricks in my case. That's why I've decided to make this video, to show you how easy it is to build your own computer. If you haven't chosen your parts already, I suggest looking at PC Part Picker while watching this video. It helps a lot when choosing parts because it lists incompatibilities, warnings, and also estimates how much power it will use, which are essential to choosing your other parts. The only tool you'll need for this is a screwdriver. Really, that's it. To start off, you'll need a place to work. Not just any old place, though. It needs to be safe and preferably dust-free. Many electrostatic sensitive parts, such as the motherboard, come with anti-static packaging on them. Before you remove it, make sure you are grounded so you aren't carrying any static electricity which could potentially fry your parts. I'd recommend using an anti-static strap, but touching your case or power supply every now and then should do the trick. I wouldn't recommend building straight onto a desk, so if you have a mod mat, use it. If not, you can use your motherboard box as a free, non-conductive work surface for now. My CPU for this build is an i7-4790K. It's probably the most popular high-ish end processor right now, and it has some great specs like its 4GHz base clock, great overclocking capabilities, and more. I also got a good deal on this one. To fit your CPU, pick it up by the edges, and find the triangle on the corner. Align that with the triangle, or the dot, on your motherboard's CPU socket. Mine's here. Lift the arm, place the CPU into the socket, aligning the gold corners or dots, push it in with no force, and then close the arm again. Cooling the CPU is extremely important, so some people tend to buy coolers that are just way too over the top for what they need. If you're not planning on doing any overclocking, then the stock cooler that comes with the processor will do just fine. However, since I do plan on doing some overclocking, I'll be using the Fantex PHTC14PE Black Edition, since it fits with my theme and it's quite a powerful cooler. Many coolers are fit differently, but there is always a manual, so read it. The cooler I have comes with two different packets depending on what kind of CPU you have. Since I'm using an i7, I'll be needing the Intel set. According to the instructions in the manual, I have to install Fantex's own backplate and mounting strips. Check the bottom of your cooler to see if the pre-applied thermal paste is intact. In this one it isn't. If not, some spare paste is most likely included. If you need to reapply thermal paste, you only need to squeeze a pea-sized amount into the center of the CPU. Over-applying isn't good since it won't transfer heat as efficiently. To actually fit the cooler, I had to take the fans off first. You might not need to do this. If you can, orient the cooler so that the fan is facing these I.O. ports at the back. Once you've got the fan in place, and depending what kind of fan you have, screw in opposite corners a fair amount, and then go back and tighten them up. But don't over tighten them, or you might risk breaking your board. Finally, plug your fan cables into the fan head as I mentioned before. Buying RAM is really easy. Just go online, find the cheapest dual channel DDR3 RAM and buy it. And just so you know, the speed of the RAM really doesn't matter. For an everyday computer, 4 gigs of RAM is fine. For a gaming computer, 8 is plenty, although 16 is great and anything above that is really for workstations and rendering machines. Since mine is going to be a gaming and editing workstation rendering machine all in one, I'll be using some lovely themed Kingston RAM. 32 gigs of it. Installing RAM is super simple. If you have one stick, pull back the tabs on the furthest RAM slot. If you have two, pull back the tabs on the furthest RAM slot and the one second closest to, in my case, the two black ones. 
and if you have four then just unclip all of them. Now line up your RAM module so the notch in the bottom of the RAM lines up with the notch in the socket. Then press down firmly on either side until the notches click back into place on either side. Unless you're going with a theme or you want it to be really silent, the case isn't really that important. All it has to do is support the size of your motherboard and your graphics card if you have one. Since I'm going with a theme, I have the Fractal Design Define R5 White Edition with a window. I mean, what would be the point in buying all of these themed parts if I never got to see them? Remove the side panels by unscrewing these big thumb screws at the back and put them somewhere safe along with anything else that came with the case. Now take the side of the case completely off. To be honest, motherboards don't really affect performance at all. They just have different features that are handy to different people. I went with the MSI Z97S Crate Edition because, you guessed it, it went with my theme. However, it also supports SLI and Crossfire, so far off in the future I may have multiple GPUs on this rig. Press on the corners of the IO shield until they snap into place. Then, if your case came with motherboard standoffs, you should screw them into these holes now. Place the motherboard onto the case, lining up the screw holes with the ones on the board. Some cases have a handy post in the centre which you can use to help line it up with. Now screw these screws into these points of the board. While it's easy to do, you should plug in your case switches and LEDs, followed by the USB 2 and 3 connectors and your front audio connector if you have them. Also plug in any fans that came in your case. Choosing a power supply can be difficult, so I recommend gathering a parts list on PC Part Picker like I suggested before, and then grabbing a power supply around 150 to 200 watts over what it recommends. I have the EVGA Supernova Nex 750G, a fully modular power supply with a very nice 80 plus gold efficiency rating. A fully modular power supply isn't required, but I prefer them because you only have to use the cables that you really need. Slide your power supply in with the fan facing upwards for better cooling, and screw it into the back of the case using these screws. Now plug in these 8 pin and 24 pin connectors. Plug in a flat SATA power cable and have it come out behind your hard drive bays. And if you have a graphics card, plug in a PCI Express connector and run it to about here. You need somewhere to store your operating system, your files and your games. So just grab the cheapest hard drive that you can at the capacity you want. Alternatively, if you want a computer that boots up like this, you could splash out on an SSD, which just makes the whole thing run faster. I have two SSDs, a 250 gig one for the operating system and some of my files, and a 480 gig one for games. I also have a 1TB hard drive for storing my YouTube footage and other files. Pull a drive holder out of the case, if it has one, and screw in the drive with the ports facing the back of the case. Now put it back in and plug in that flat SATA power connector you left there before. Finally, plug this L-shaped SATA data cable into the drive and then into the motherboard. If one end is straight and the other end is a right angle, plug the angled end into the drive and the straight end into the board. For non-gamers, a dedicated graphics card like this one isn't actually required because most processors come with them built in, so if you're building a regular computer you can skip this step. An easy way to choose a GPU when you're on a budget is to buy all the other parts first and then spend whatever you have left on the best GPU you can afford. Just make sure it fits in your case. Today I have the Galax GTX 980 Ti Hall of Fame. You can actually see me unbox this with a friend if you click my glasses right now. Unscrew the two expansion slot covers on your case which correspond to this PCIe 16X slot. Align the card with the slot, push it down firmly and replace the screws. You won't be needing the covers anymore, but keep them just in case. Finally, plug in that PCI Express power cable we left earlier. All that's left to do now is to plug it in and install Windows, but I'll leave you to Google how to do that, it's not difficult. Well done, you've just built your own computer, and it was cheaper than buying one off the shelf. Now you've seen how easy it is to build a computer, maybe you could teach a friend too. Or if you're not too confident, you could just send them this video. Either way, spread your newfound knowledge to the people who don't understand by sharing this with anyone and everyone. If you want to see how well Mono performs, I'll link a separate video in the description with some benchmarks. 
If you like this, you know what to do. If you didn't, tell me what I could do better. Anyway, I'm going to go play some games now. See you next time.